Uh, the buzz of the motocross world was watching this gentleman on the CRE bike in Japan. Trey Kennard, what's up, Trey? How are you, man? I'm good. How are you guys? We're great. Thank you for calling for call, coming on tonight. Uh, I know you're probably jet lagged and everything else, so thanks. Yeah, no worries, man. I'm all messed up, but I'll probably be up all night anyway. So, <laughs> uh, listen, two DNF, DNF. How much do we blame Droopy for any of this? Can we blame Droopy oh, at all? Pretty much all of it, actually. Okay, all right. yeah. fantastic. Good, it's, to, it's, good to know. It's a Canadian thing, you know. Oh well, now I don't like that. Now we went too far. Back it up. <laughs> Drew or false? And Drewski said something to Jay Wilson being that second moto on the starting line or something. Yeah. And it caused uh, a little bit of a reaction. No, I don't remember. Did, does Jay Wilson? Does Jay Wilson, Wilson hate electric bikes? Yeah. Is there anything like? Did he show some rage? He couldn't have said he couldn't hurt, hurt it, right? Because he was it was in front of him. In front of him, right? Because yeah. uh, like Jay, Jay's a good guy, Trey, but not at that moment. That what was... happened? What happened, dude? I'd... I don't know. I mean, I I really like the guy, you know, um, and he he did feel super bad. But he doesn't feel the same. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it. Uh, I don't know, dude. I don't. I don't know. I I'm pretty sure I had the wheel. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah I'm pretty line. sure you did. Yep. Um, there was so a right I, turn. I, I think that maybe he didn't know about. Because yeah, I, I you got when clean, I, when it first son. Happened, I was like maybe just like uh, maybe the just break. a racing incident, you know, yeah, like yeah. whatever. Yep. And then Shane was like, when you see the video, you might be a little more upset. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> someone showed me the video, and I'm like, oh, shoot. There, there was an inside that. rut, Jay. You, 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 you look like you could be slowing down to take that, but no, 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 Jay. You just, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if it was electric bikes. He just doesn't like electric bikes. I don't know. Trey, oh, wasn't um, the, he's been undefeated all season, has he not? Yeah, yeah, the the e-bike took him down, man. The, yeah, the, my throttle yeah, housing. Literally. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my throttle housing was stuck in his rear wheel. I just, Poor guy. I just feel like it's kind of like that was kind of unnecessary, don't you think? That, that like to throw away his perfect season on something like, like that. that? Yeah. Yeah, I think I don't know. It seemed like I don't know. You know, I I know him a little bit, but it seemed like there was a, a, definitely a lot of excitement around the weekend. You know, um, and you know he's obviously one pretty handedly over there. So I don't know if there was some kind of, you know, um, anxiety or hype or stress around, um, you know, just, mm -hmm. just another rider, American rider being there. So I don't know if that just hyped everything up and, and, um, you know, whatever. But, um, <laughs> he, he was not yeah. having that. He was not having yeah. that. Yeah. No. Yeah. He, he, you could tell, you know, that he was, he's definitely wanting to, um, you know, to, to win, which, you know, I think after the first moto, um, you know, it was going to be tough for me to beat him. So, um, did you, but, did, did you like clean him in your Geico days or something? And you're just forgetting about it. And this was like <laughs> frontier revenge well, from years well, ago. I, I told, I told him like, dude, I've, I've cleaned a lot of people out. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them like really unintentionally. So just like, don't feel too bad about, about it all. So yeah. he, he felt super bad. So, but oh, I feel cool. like yeah. Trey, when you clean people out, like you literally were out of control and missed your rear brake. And then you're like, Oh my bad. <laughs> like, shoot. I didn't mean to jump on you. My yeah, bad. Yeah. I don't know. I'm Chad um, Reed? Oh yeah, yeah, Chad Reed. Right. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> so when did you first ride the CRE? When when was the first time you rode it? I went over. I think at the beginning of September. Um, I went over in July. We had some other testing going on, and they kind of had like a mocked version, just so I could sit on it and see kind of mm -hmm. how it was going to feel. If they didn't make any changes before I actually rode it, so I saw it then, and then rode it in September. I was there for two weeks, and um, we kind of just went at it for for a little while. So, um, rode it those two weeks, and then came home, and then uh, went back for just a few days and did some kind of final testing. And then the week before the race, the race, I rode it a few times too. So, that's awesome. And what do you think? I mean, I, I've ridden I've ridden one that just it just smiles. It just it's really cool. It's really fun. What what you? Yeah, think? I, I'm super. Just I mean, I I understand. You know, I I. I like the same guy that's really upset about the two stroke is the guy that's, you know, upset about this, but I just hope people give it a chance because man, it is so fun to ride. Like the first time I rode it, um, you know, it needed to be developed, but I was like all smiles the whole mm -hmm. time. And, um, 
to me, that's what motorcycling is all about is, is being on a bike and smiling. And so I, I think, uh, any way that we can continue to create that is a, is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, Trey Kennard brought to you by EVS Sports. Pulp 30s go to save evs-sports.com. Trey, was, what was it like riding it in the mud compared to a gas bike? It was different. I mean, I think that was, uh, you know, Saturday I struggled for sure. Um, part of that was just I haven't raced in a long time, you know. So That's true too, um, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Mammoth. So I was right? I was yeah, <laughs> Mammoth was it and then before that was uh Red Bud of 17. So there was like a a lot more nerves that I anticipated and a lot of like pressure around the bike too. So um the first thing I did when I lined up for practice was spun out. There's like 20 cameras around me. Yeah, you can thank uh, you can thank Don Maeda for putting that up over here for us. Yeah. 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 But um yeah, there was just a, a lot of things going on for the the Saturday struggles, but part of that was I'd only ridden it on like the hardest hard pack of tracks, and so um, there was definitely some adjustments to be done. And um, I think everyone adapted super well. You know, like the whole team that's developing that bike did a really good job on race day, and um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. So, can anyone here that rode the bike in Japan or works for Honda? Can anyone talk about when the production thing is coming? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know that there's really a, a solid date on that. You okay. Know? Um, but, I mean, in, in Honda fashion, they're going to they're gonna take their time and do it right. So yeah. um, this was definitely, you know, a, a testing event, which I'm, I'm super glad that we did it because it really brought out of things that a lot of things that haven't come out in testing. So, um so yeah, and, and obviously you know to to create the hype for for the bike as well. Yeah. So which I thought you know, other than you know the second moto shenanigans and and uh, me making a, a bonehead move in the last one, um, I think it was a pretty good good showing. So I think that the development on this bike too is kind of a group of people that we don't normally work with, not typically anyways. Right. Japan, they kind of had a whole little. Group of different like, departments, probably. Yeah, right? it was almost yeah. like uh, this is the radio department, <laughs> <laughs> the battery department, the, ba- the battery, the department. battery guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the wire guys. I would, yeah. I would hope they came from the the F one team, you know, with the hybrid stuff over yeah. there. But, uh, but, <laughs> but anyways, they um, hey, call the boat battery guys. We got a new bike coming. <laughs> but so, anyways, it, it was kind of cool to see some of those guys. And actually, one of the mechanics was our liaison Toru, who's who's yeah. been around for a long time, and it was cool to see him. Drewski wasn't allowed to touch the bike because he wasn't. Battery certified or whatever, <laughs> so he was allowed to be there. And Stop it! Are you but Toro, yeah, but Toro, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Toro was. Yeah, yeah. Troop, troop, he wasn't allowed to touch it. Like out race day, <laughs> yeah, he yeah. wasn't. He wasn't allowed to like really he's not be a battery mechanic. certified. You know how it is. You know, like it's very. Oh, I love it. By the book, yes. right? So, <laughs> yes. uh, so anyways, but yeah, Trey. The only thing I, I mean, I haven't even talked to Trey since he. Oh, okay. I just texted with him yep. about coming here, but right. um, but uh, but what about when you had to do a start with no clutch or anything like that? I mean, I get it. The thing has instant torque and all that. Um, and as you know, the video proved that the thing was maybe a little bit slippery on that gate and it was the, the mesh was tighter. It looked like, but doing a start with no clutch and all these motors next to you making noise, that must've been tough as wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I know that like, um, you know, it's like, Oh, that's the strong suit of the bike. Obviously it's going to get, get a good start, but you still have to execute, right? Like, and take everything you know about, you know, RPMs and clutch release and all that and just throw it out the window because <laughs> sure. nothing yeah. really translates, you know? Really? Um, so there's, there's a lot of different technique and I, man, I had to climb on the front of that bike. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm sitting on the, I guess it's not a fuel tank, but the plastic, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the plastic there. Um, and it's all in the release of your wrist, which is, which is super difficult to nail. Um, and then just sitting there in silence is really hard too. You know, the revs go up and um, <laughs> you're just, you're just sitting there, you know, you're like, Oh, this is so strange, but it feels so cool when you, when you nail it, you know, like I did a bunch of them before the race and obviously missed a bunch of them. But when you really get it, it you just feel the horsepower and the instant torque of that bike and it all connects. And it's, it's really cool to, actually do it by yourself just because there's there's you can hear the traction and in everything that's happening that you don't normally get to experience the chain so. slap the you chain feel, slap is all weird all the time you feel can the watts yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the horsepower yeah the wattage <laughs> point 21 gigawatts yeah. <laughs> um, so are I don't you even are, know. okay are you like well 
talking about starts. I like I like starts, but you're not matting it, right? It's too powerful for that. Or can they change the start strategy so you just mat it? Because I would imagine it is very hard to modulate the throttle. I think they had like kind of a start and, mode, right? Yeah, trailer. start mode. Yeah, yeah. we. We developed a, a curve that that obviously made it as easy as possible. Okay. Um, but if you make it to where you can just go zero to one hundred like instantly, it's kind of too slow. So mm. um, it's it's kind of like uh, when the gate drops, you go and the response gets kind of too delayed, so you lose that handlebar. So oh. um, I ended up on a map that was maybe a little bit aggressive. Um, but I just had to had to deliver the throttle well, and I knew if I just got over the gate good, and the form was good, ten feet out of the gate, I, I think I would be I would right. be good. And, and you yeah. got two of the three hole shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your third one was yeah. good. Your third one, like you, it didn't look like you had the the absolute hole shot coming into the first turn, but you cut underneath Jay Wilson right, and then pinned it and came out in front, kind of pushed him to the edge of the track. Jay even matter. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought maybe I could battle him, but I'm like ah. Uh, Last time I was on the outside, it didn't go so well. So I'll just cut under here. And then, uh, it, it was cool. It was fun. Like Obviously, my race craft was way off in the beginning on Saturday, and I felt like I was starting to come around as a racer. Just bummed I didn't get to finish it off. Um, did you uh, – your crash in the third one, anything related to electric bike, uh, uh, not being aware of it, or, any, or was it just like a dorky crash that you would have done on a gas-powered bike? When I talked to Jay uh, before the race, he's like, man, it is so slick. And that's kind of what I had prepared for, like, even with the bike set up. Mm -hmm. um, but they ripped it really deep, and then it rained, like, two inches on Saturday morning. So it ended up being just super deep, ruddy. And then the last lap, it finally got that shine, and, and um, I just didn't respect it enough. Okay. Um, obviously there's a lot of like instant torque, um, yep. that I, I probably should have respected a little bit more and it, it just kind of spit off a rock and the way that I landed in this pothole, I twisted the front end, like all the pieces and, um, the wheel wouldn't even roll. So oh, it had to be done. Wow. Um, was it, was it, was it just overwhelming attention all weekend long media wise and people and all that was, how was that? Like that must've that must been, I mean, you've won championships, you've won races, so you're used to that, or was this next level? I just haven't had it in a while, you know? Yeah. Like, I've gotten kind of used to being the guy at the races that, like, a handful of people know, and you're like, oh, yeah, there's Canard. He's <laughs> back in 2010, he yeah. did this or that, you know? Oh, he ran a RV into the pole. That was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, now, now you know, I'm, I'm that doesn't happen very often yeah. as, as far as and when I'm at the races. I'm kind of just doing my role and, and helping where I can, but to kind of be – back in that role was definitely different and then there was a lot of questions about the bike that i don't know what i can or can't answer you know so that that's kind of difficult because it's it's still very much prototype and under development so that you don't want to say too much um about it but so it's hard to manage all that and then learning the the jmx format was also tough you know even from the gate pick to the qualifying race to the practices it was all um, yeah, you were wild card, so they gave you last gate pick or something. I saw. Yeah, or, yeah. Last gate yeah. pick in the in the qualifying, qualifying race. race. Okay. So, and then there's there's the other things about <laughs> racing the e bike that you don't think about as far as you know, um, you know how you're managing your economy, and then um, you know not having a clutch. Like the first lap of the the qualifying race, I was a mess because I was you know, riding hard like you normally would and probably over revving it, but there's no, there was no clutch to kind of save me, you know, to kind of like when I got out of sorts, just pull it in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. None of that. So I jumped out of probably like six ruts. I was all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the thing that really got me was when I was around five or six bikes, I couldn't hear my bike at all. Right. Um, and there's no, like almost no vibration. So, yeah. Um, trying to like understand what was happening with the bike, what kind of power it was putting out, and that kind of thing was all all different, you know. Um, but well, I felt like I adapted pretty well. But it was it was a lot to take in and, and try to try to perform all all at the same time. Do you know if the Japanese Federation? We were talking about this off the top of the show. Do you know if they governed it and there was or was it sort of like a gentleman's agreement by Honda to keep cap it at a level of horsepower? Or do you know anything about how that was done? I know originally it was it was 
meant to be or wanted to be raced in the 250 class. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's probably where it could probably belong the best at this point, you know, just, mm-hmm. um, we're really stretching things as far as battery capacity and all that. So, um, but I understand why they wouldn't want that, you know, and I think everyone's needs to be pretty careful with it as far as where it belongs and all of that. But, um, you know, I think in the end, the 15-minute the format was perfect for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know they were there was a lot of things that they were, um, you know, wanting to be careful of. Like, I had to wear the, the emergency kill. I saw that. Yeah, you had the quad, that kind the of quad kills to switch on you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just things like that that they, they, they want to be extra careful about. But um, I think, you know, I'm just happy that they allowed it to race yeah. because I think there's uh, – you know, like I said before, there's a, there's people that aren't for it, but um, the next step of development for that bike is to go racing. So um, I think it's exciting. I was talking to somebody involved with the Alta, and they kind of looked at the Stark, and the Stark is better. It's more modern, better suspension. Uh, the settings are better for horsepowers and all. It's a better bike than the Alta. But the battery tech is the same. There hasn't been any new battery tech to keep these bikes from, like someone like Trey, 30 minutes, the thing would start dying. There's just, you just, they get hot, they lose power, that's it. And this person was telling me there is no new battery tech that they know of, even on the horizon. Now, maybe Honda's got something, because Honda's... There is something new. There is It's so- not not just Honda. I think Toyota announced it a while ago. Did they? Okay. Yeah, solid state. Oh, okay. It's a solid yeah, state, solid state. battery yep. that, that, that apparently is going to revolutionize the whole thing. Okay. But that's kind of... That's- propaganda right now i guess down, I, I, down I the road or i whatever. haven't seen that to right. be like proved yeah. but they're saying that even on cars they'll take the mileage from you know 300 miles to a thousand really yeah wow. 10 minute charge that'll be pretty amazing but uh yeah, for, we'll for now though these bikes yeah that that is the weakness of these bikes is yeah when someone's really good on them like Trey canard their mm-hmm. battery life isn't great you know so that's that's an issue with the little electric 50 class at loretta's yeah. A really gnarly kid will make the thing die before the race is over. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're not quite there yet, and maybe solid state will Yeah, or maybe more technologies will come. But that's sure. the late, there is something on the horizon that people have been, you know, adver- or talking about. Yeah, yeah. And, and whether that becomes true or not, I, I'm not a battery yeah. expert, so that's just what I've read. Yep. Uh, Trey, did the bike – so in the past when I've ridden the bikes, um, they're heavy. But even people who rode the Stark, they don't feel heavy on the track. Yeah, I mean the, the power character is so good. Yeah. Like, um, it if you have to, it takes a minute to learn for sure. You know, like you're you're used to shifting and and kind of you know finding the right torque character and all of that. Mm-hmm. So it definitely takes a minute to to get. But yeah, it's it's crazy smooth. Like uh, I like I I just think about you know, your local vet rider that goes out on the weekends. And I'm like, sure. Dude, this is the ultimate bike for this rider, you yep. know, um, just, you know, no oil change, no air filter. Yeah. And, and you, it's just really smooth and you can make it as slow or as fast as you want. So, um, so yeah, it, yep. I, I just keep going back to it being fun because, um, you know, I'm, I don't really like to get into the, the politics of all the electric stuff and all that. But for me, motorcycling is fun and, we got bikes to do that that's the that's the big deal yeah why are these guys so mad like don't buy one don't buy it don't I, don't worry yeah. about it why I, are you so mad i think they're probably just afraid that it's going to take over completely and we're just not going to be able to buy um you know uh, in uh, combustion power. engines yeah. you know but yeah. um yeah it, like i was saying earlier i i don't think that's happening anytime soon and no. I, I think we'll coexist for a long time but it has a great spot you know yeah. like we said absolutely Trey, like what if you had a ra- uh, track right downtown and people can come and be, you can build a supercross track downtown and have a race, and people wouldn't be bummed. You would think. Yeah. So it's got there's um, just even some the, you can the do. Stark comes with a, a charger in a stand, like so you get your stand, you just plug your bike in. You still need a generator. That thing's cool. Or a plug, yeah. but you know it's, they're coming along. How long so. is it gonna sit there? You think? I don't know. Yeah, I'm like not you're sure. missing the next motor. Well, like, listen, the way I the way I ride the way I ride, my arms and hands are pumped up after 20 minutes, and I'll be there. I'll be sitting. I'll be sitting there for an hour. Yeah. So I got an hour. <laughs> yeah. You know, your pump, Steve would be like, "I can't do it, dude. Yeah. I, the thing's only I would 30 love percent. I would love I, to go on. I got I would no love juice. To. Yeah. I want to race right now, right. but I can't. Uh, yeah. That's pretty cool, Trey. I think too. Like, look, and you've you've done a lot of stuff. You won championships, motocross the nations, right? Uh, you were coached by Tim Ferry. There's stuff that you've done. <laughs> That's phenomenal, <laughs> but but to be the rider to 
race. I mean, Ernie did the 250F back in the day. and Tortelli was Tortelli did yeah. the 450. And Drewski was there. I thought Rhino did no, the there. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, back back to my story, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I think, Trey, for you, like just being chosen to do this, electric CRE, which let's say in 20 years, you know, it's a <clears throat> popular bike and everybody loves them and all the bugs are worked out. It's kind of neat, Trey, that you're the first guy. You know? Oh, dude, I'm I'm honored, dude. Yeah. Like, um, I think my role has changed a little bit over the last couple of years with with Honda, and, and um, I'm I'm ex- I'm honestly I'm I'm really excited about the next couple of years. Um, I don't know. It, it's just a really really fun thing to be a part of as far as the development. Um, you know, at this level, so. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm enjoying it a lot, man. I, I think it's really cool. The, the, the trips to Japan are tough sometimes. You know, it's long flight and different time zone and all that. But I've really enjoyed um, just being a part of the process and, and um, you know, being able to add any kind of feedback, especially to be able to kind of relay our race team, you know, the things that our, our guys are asking for or needing or wanting mm-hmm. to be able to, to – try to offer that at the very base level to the guys that are building the bikes is pretty valuable. I think to me, um, and I hope it pays off, you know, I hope the next, next few years things, um, you know, are, uh, really, really good bikes, you know? So we announced earlier that, uh, that Hunter Lawrence signed an agreement to write 450. Yeah. Um, we've also signed Trey for another two years that just happened oh, uh, nice. you know, recently. So, yeah. um, We've been way more involved with Japan developing into the production, the current 450 and 250. So Trace helping a bunch with that, and we're having a lot more input with uh, with our guy riders also. Yep. So nice. pretty exciting times. Yeah, Trey. Don't I mean tonight we're just we're, we're blowing Lars about all the accomplishments of Honda, and you know he deserves them. <laughs> but let's not forget, you deserve some of that too, man. You know you, you work with these guys, you're testing for them, you're eliminating. You know, all of uh, Drewski's shitty suspension settings right away, <laughs> and then you're getting the good ones. So you deserve some credit, Trey. You know? No, th- thanks, man. I mean, I I, uh, I do give Lars a lot of credit, man. I, I think uh, what, what he's done super well is he's created an amazing environment for for everyone to work together. And, you know, Eric Keo really laid the foundation for that. Um, but uh, what I think Lars has just uh, added an element there that um, – allows for a lot of creativity and and um you know passion is really important but if it doesn't have a place to kind of grow or 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 you know have open discussion it, it kind of can go away so i just i think lars has, has done a really great job with that and and um i think i guess what i'm saying is it's allowed everyone to really contribute and um you know it's really cool I, I'm, I'm really happy to be a part of this team it's a it's a great group of people that are all really passionate about uh, what we're doing so it's uh super cool um, I, wrote, I wrote that in his agreement okay yeah, yeah. he had he has to say that <laughs> Lars, thank you trey Lars is very oh, media that, that friendly bonus, too. Right? isn't that the, the, <laughs> the Lars bonus 